Uh, blessed Wednesday. I trust you are keeping well. If not, um, listen to what God has in store for you. I trust your day will change for the better. I am Ribwani from 10 times a better generation school ministries. I am your teacher. As you know, the ministry is headed by Senior Pastor Budheri and ours is to equip the saints with the word of God. Make sure that uh, there is growth, growth from one level of grace and glory to the other. Theme of the year 2022 is moving to a higher level. And ours is to make sure that we cut a pulse and we continue to live up to that and make sure that um, you do grow. This is session number 18 of the Believer's Affirmation. I believe we are wrapping up. We're going to start something exciting. Um, what exactly, I don't know as yet, but I know the Lord will lead us to that. Let us get straight into prayer. And then we get to the word. I'll be brief and concise, just wrapping up from uh, where we left off last week. And um, yeah, we'll then take it from there. Let us pray further. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for... You are majesty. Thank you, Father, for you are faithful. I'm thankful for today's word. And I say, Father, I know that our spiritual quench, our spiritual thirst is going to be quenched. Our spiritual hunger is going to be filled because I know this is a special word that you have prepared specially for us. And I know that, Father God, our lives they will no longer be the same. And not after we partake of this word, I know that, Father, you are good to us. I know that, Father, indeed, we shall grow from one level of grace and glory to the other. Oh, because of you, Lord, I say, Father, I teach that which you wish me to teach to your children. And hence I bring my heart and I say, Father, I submit myself. And I say, Father, I am a vessel used of you to say and to proclaim that which you've prepared for your children, every single one of them. And I know that, Father, we will all grow from this word. I know there will be change. I know, Father, there is no stagnancy but movement as we hear and as we partake of your word. Because I know when we partake of your word, we receive you, you in your fullness, Lord. And I say thank you for this word. Amen. Uh, I've said that we're going to touch on what we were touching on in the previous week. Just to wrap it up. As much as we've wrapped it up, we'll also start wrapping up um, this entire series now. And we're going to start wrapping up now in um, session number 18. I believe the next ones are going to be shorter uh, sessions. But we just were building up a firm foundation. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 10, it reads that, For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works which God prepared us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that we could walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. I think uh, we all agree that uh, life is tough, we all agree that in this earthly walk, we go through trials of various kinds. We go through difficulties. We all agree that it is always sometimes the bend, but it's never the end. We agree that life is no way easy. But we also need to acknowledge that for this earthly life, we need to use heavenly problems to solve that. Because we know that the heavens, they are forever established and the will of God prevails there. And God said in the beginning, that was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In the very same beginning, God said, let us make man 
in our own image, in our kindness, that man, he be like us. And if man is like us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, man ought to dominate here on earth. Man ought to exercise the heavenly dominion here on earth because the earth God has given to us. And as we read just now, he says that he has created us to do good works here on earth. As much as the earthly walk is difficult, as much as we are persecuted, as much as we meet trials of various kinds, we ought not deviate from the word. We ought to stick to the word still. Because there we will find our solutions. There we will find that which God has prepared specially for us. It read that we are his workmanship. We alluded previously that as much as we are his workmanship, we are exactly like God. Previously, we've also said that then if we are his workmanship, we are God's here on earth. Because if we are his workmanship, it says that we are his masterwork, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used. Ready to be used and being used of love by God. Ready to be used to do the good works each he called us to do. I think we labored a lot in the previous week to say that, guys, every single one of us is special, rich and poor. We labored to say that let us not look or treat people based on the physical possessions that they have. Let us not have high regard for people because of the physical things that they have. The physical things are good. We can't take that away. But we ought to remember that uh, what is more real, it is what is spiritual. Hence, we need to take high regard for everyone. Whether you wear designer clothes or not, the rich, the poor, everybody, every single one of us is equal in the sight of the Lord. So therefore, as much as we are here to do good works, let our good works not be discriminatory. Let our good works not be channeled based on the physical benefit we intend to receive from whoever we are practicing or exercising good works towards. I wish to bring it to everybody that we are God's workmanship created to do good works for every single one. Not for the ones that are elite, not for the ones that have made it, not for where we feel like we'll benefit. If it's the case, who is going to help the poor also get where you are? Because at the end of the day, we are destiny helpers. You don't know what the poor man or woman has in store for you. There might be angels of God, God's mighty beings of strength, just there to help you reach to the next place. As children of God, we need to know that um, we are part of the body of Christ. And if one part of the body suffers because we are not doing good works for that particular body, then the whole body ultimately suffers. Hence, we have to serve one another in love, in humility, not looking at what we have physically, but that which we have spiritually. Because that which is spiritual, it is of God and it is from God. I want to remind you that you are his workmanship, male, female, man, woman, girl, boy. You are God's workmanship, created to do good works. You are God's masterwork. It's not about how you feel about it. It's what the word of God says about it. And we take God at his word. We know that uh, God and his word, they are one. And when we take him at his word, we have him. Hence, we practice the word 
in season, out of season, whether we feel like it or not, we practice the word always. Let's make a quick confession and then we will move on to the next scripture. As I said, this is going to be brief today. You repeat after me. Thank you, Father, for I am your workmanship. I am your art of work. I am created in Christ Jesus, Lord. From above, I am transformed, I am renewed, and I am here to serve you. I am here to serve in the body of Christ. I am here to serve the poor. I am here to serve the rich. I am here to serve your children, O Lord. Father, I say, I'm not only ready to be used, I wish to be continuously used by you for good works, which you, God, prepared for me beforehand. Thank you, Father, for I know that my life has been predestined and predestined for good works. And I know that as much as I'm designed for good works, to do good works, good works, they all follow, also follow me. Good things, they follow me. Signs and wonders, they follow me. Spiritually first, and then they manifest physically. I'm thankful that, Father, I prosper in every good work. I know that, Father, as much as I am a spiritual being, I would wish to live a good life here on earth and that's why i say lord i believe that all my needs they are sorted in christ all my wants they are fulfilled in christ all my shortcomings they are fulfilled in christ and that is why father i say i miss the chaos i miss the difficulties i am rich in christ in health in wealth and in good success i speak and i say also that father money the money of this world it follow me in abundance i say lord i shall therefore never lack because i am here lord to do good works and i know that lord the source of my total supply is you lord Hence, I will continue to serve you with humility. And I know that, Lord, as I do good works, I'm fulfilling the kingdom mandate. And I know that, Father, I do this earnestly and diligently. And I know that, Lord, as your word says that you reward those who earnestly and diligently seek you. And I say, Father, as I've been saying, I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And I know and I'm convinced that, Father, the rest you shall add upon, you shall continue to add upon because you are faithful to your word. And I know you will never deviate from it. And for that, Father, I am thankful. Moving right along, I said it's going to be quick. We are going to touch on the last scripture. Matthew chapter 6 verse 26. It reads that, um, Look at the birds of the earth. They neither sow seed, nor reap the harvest, nor gather the crops into barns. And yet your heavenly Father keeps on feeding them. Are you not much more worthy than they? Are you not made in his express image and his likeness? Are you not like God here on earth, continuing with creation where he left it off? Are you not much more valuable than the rubies? Are you not much more valuable than the birds? The answer is yes. You are indeed much more valuable than the uh, other things, than the birds of the air or the grass of the field. 
And as much as you are very well able than them, you need to know it. That your value, your value comes from the Lord. If you need to know your net worth, you need to know that uh, to quantify that, quantify the God that lives and abides in you. That's your net worth. That's how much you're worth. And He says, as much as He takes care of the birds of the earth, as much as He takes care. of the crops in the bands and he continues to feed them he says be rest assured that you are much more than them he says that uh, through your difficult walk of life he is there with you he says that uh, continue to seek him and never forsake him always he says that uh, beloved children i love you as much as you love me he says that in your shortcomings i love you regardless he says that my child continue to walk in love he says that uh, through it all i am there with you living and abiding in you both to do of my will and my good pleasure he says that for your promises uh, are fulfilled in me because the word of god says the promises of god in our lives they are indeed and they are yes and they are amen he says as such if you take me in my word as my word says then you shall have all of me we've been reading and reading time and again to say that uh, seek and continue seeking for those who seek they shall find It says keep on knocking for those who knock the door will be open for them it shows that there is consistency there is repetition there is no giving up you keep at it is life difficult yes it is is it better with the lord yes it's much better can i continue and prosper and conquer in the lord yes you can and yes you will for as long as you believe i want to remind you that uh, you're bigger than your problems man i want to remind you that as much as it's complicated as much as it's hard it's just a bend it's not the end i want to remind you that god loves you regardless i want to remind you that the promises of god for your life they are yes and they are amen i want to remind you that you are bigger than your problems I want to say to you and put it forward in case you have forgotten as a reminder that uh, you're your own prophet. You will go as much or as far as you say with your own mouth. It doesn't matter what other people say about you. It doesn't matter if they curse you or persecute you. As long as it's not coming from your own mouth, it will not succeed. If they lied to you and they told you that generational curses are forever, it's a lie from the devil. Generational curses, they are not forever. And we break them right now. In Jesus name. That simple. And you say yourself that you are not of generational curses no more. But you are a victor. You are a child of God triumphing in the victory of Christ. A reminder that we are called to do nothing but to fight the good fight of faith, fighting it from a position of victory, exercising love to the body of Christ, to our brothers and sisters, to our neighbors, loving them as we love ourselves. It's no easy road, but it's worthwhile. It's great because we have Christ who has walked it before us to show how we ought to walk it also. And lastly as I'm concluding, be reminded that God loves you. Be reminded that uh, your situation, your troubles they are temporary. Be reminded that God is mindful of you. Be reminded that 
it is well. Through it all, it is well. Be reminded that this too shall pass. Be reminded that there is victory at the end of the tunnel. Be reminded that it's just a bend and not the end. Be reminded lastly that you are your own prophet and you will go as far as you say with your own mouth. So therefore don't limit your speech. Don't limit what you wish to have. Speak it all out. Do not fear. Just speak it all out. Say that which God has purposed out for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Last confession you repeat after me. We are done. Thank you, Father, for you are mindful of me. As much as you are mindful of the birds of the earth and the lilies of the field, I know you are much more mindful of me. And I know that in my life, I will continue, Lord, to reign, to rule, and to dominate. I see beyond, Lord, my problems. I say my problems, my challenges, my shortcomings, all of these, Lord, they are temporary. I look, Father, at the end, and the end it looks so great. I see that I have won, Father, the good fight of the faith. I know that, Father, I am fighting from a position of victory. I am enforcing the victory of Christ. And that is why I say, I have been blessed. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And for that, I know that blessings, physical, they follow me because spiritually I'm already blessed. And therefore the physical blessings, they follow me as a result of that blessing. And that is why I'm not shy to say, I am rich in Christ Jesus, spiritually first and physically also. I don't know how you Lord will do it, but I trust you will. I trust you have done it for me. I don't look at my troubles. I don't look at my problems. I don't look at my shortcomings. I look beyond them. And I say, Father, thank you for your goodness. I say, thank you for these spiritual eyes. Hence, I say, Lord, in my life, I reign, I rule, and I dominate in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Short and concise, just a reminder that you go out and exercise love. You don't look down on people because we are all the body of Christ. United, we continue to conquer. United, we continue to do great and mighty exploits. I want to remind you that God lives and abides in you both to do of his will and his good pleasure. Therefore, be faithful in serving others and serving the Lord first. And there, you'll find your true joy. Lastly, if you wish to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, Christ Jesus, it's as simple as you repeating after me. You open your mouth and say, Thank you, Father, for I believe you. I believe you and your word. And I know that, Father, you and your word you are one and that is why i make this declaration that christ christ jesus i accept you as my lord and personal savior i welcome you into my life and i say lord use me to do good works here on earth for I know that is my earthly assignment. I believe that Christ Jesus is Lord. 
And as much as I believe, I believe that I am a new creation altogether. I behold the new that I have become. I am a child of God. And I am happy that the heavens they are celebrating me today. I know this walk will not be easy, but I trust that you Lord you will walk with me. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. It's that simple. Welcome to the kingdom of God. As we keep on saying if you wish to be connected to a Bible based church where the word is taught diligently and earnestly, reach out on the comment section and uh we'll be in touch with you and uh connect you to a word based church. Go on and have yourself a great week. It's Easter weekend. For those who are traveling, travel safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones, be responsible. At the end of the day, we have to be responsible citizens, observe uh, protocols of the road and make sure that we take care of one another. Be even more blessed and uh, lastly, God loves you very 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 much. God loves you. Have a great week further and um uh, from 10 times a better generation. School ministries. We say have yourself a great Easter. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.